Hello, this is Patrick Moraz, and you are listening to the Yes Music Podcast. Greetings, friends, and welcome to my review of the ARW show. So as you probably are aware, uh, last Saturday, ARW, which is basically Yes featuring Anderson Raven Waveman, appeared here in Toronto at Massey Hall. Um, I was a little hesitant about going to this show, mainly due to the passing of Virgil Howe. It was kind of one of those times where it was pretty uh, sad in the world of Yes. And uh, while Yes music I find very uplifting in the most down of times, I wasn't sure if the music on this night would do any justice in terms of that. But with that said, I decided to go anyways. Mainly because I had gotten in contact with Lee Pomeroy and uh, we were deciding to get together and maybe have a quick chat before the show and uh, catch up on a few things and maybe even get some uh, recording for the podcast. So that kind of made me go forth with the concert. And I'm glad I went for many reasons, which which I'll get to right now in this recording. So the drive down was sort of uneventful, which is good considering that this is Toronto and usually around the times of 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock, the highways can be a little bit jammed to say the least. But once I got downtown, I found parking easy enough and decided to go by the venue, which was about a five-minute walk from where I parked, and see if maybe I could uh, find some of the guys hanging around outside the venue, which happens sometimes. Now, when I went there, there was really nobody hanging around outside except people who were working in the crew. So I resorted back to my emailing tactics with Lee, And after a while, he did get a hold of me and um, messaged me saying that he was inside working on the meet and greets with the Yes fans that were in the building and to hold tight and see if he can come out and talk to me. Needless to say, I waited for a little while. The weather was beautiful, so there was no real issue with staying outside a little longer. I actually enjoyed it. I hadn't been downtown for a little while. After a few emails back and forth, and talking to a few of the people from the crew outside, which I have to note, didn't believe me that I was actually waiting for Lee to come out. They just thought I was just somebody who was just hanging around and hoping just to find one of them and just talk to them. I told them that I I did have contact with Lee before and had spoken with him quite a few times. They just kind of gave me the old, yeah, yeah, sure, sure kind of look. But whatever, I took my time and just waited. And lo and behold, I got a message from Lee saying that he had just gotten off the phone with his wife back home and was coming out to see me. Two minutes later, I hear a voice from down the alleyway saying, Hey Mark, what's going on mate? And I turned around and there was Lee. And we proceeded to have a really great conversation. We caught up on a lot of things. Uh, Mainly he talked about his love of Canada and how much he was enjoying his time here. He was talking about a lot about how he thought the tour was going really good. And a few other things uh, that I think I'll squeak in to the uh, review right around here. In 2012, I was with a band called Three Friends and we were playing all the Gentle Giant music. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Gary Green from Gentle Giant and Malcolm Mortimer. And I absolutely love Quebec City. What a beautiful place. And then, so we'd go there and then I think the day after we'd go to Montreal. And then that's it for Canada. Mm-hmm. Which is a shame. Yeah. Because I like the in Canada. It's great. Well, you know... It, w- it would have been interesting to see how it would have been if you would have went maybe even further east, like the Maritime, like Halifax and stuff like that, because they're really starving for stuff like that. You know? See, I'd have to go to Vancouver. Has it been to Vancouver? Yeah. Oh. Or Calgary oh, and Edmonton. Calgary's in Nova Scotia, isn't it? Yeah, that's on the... Wow. Yeah. But it, people there are so, like, appreciative of music there. Like, really? See, any, like, Rush or Petition. It's funny, you're wearing the Rush shirt there. For that tour, for that tour, they were actually the, the fans petitioned the band to come and play on okay. that side, that side of Canada because they've never played there. See, this place is obviously the place that Rush did their first live album, yeah. all the world's a stage. Yeah. So earlier on, when I was on, on the stage, um, there were a few people for the meet and greet US band. So I started off with a, a, a Rush bass line um, <laughs> and got a round of applause for it. So then I opened my shirt and I got another round of applause <laughs> and I finished off with a bit of Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I, I love Rush, absolutely love Rush. Yeah. Right up there with Yes for me, you know. Oh, yeah. I love it. And uh, so for me to still be in the same place, it's, it's a thrill, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it is. this place is considered like holy ground because of that, because, you know, all the world of stage, lots of Rush fans consider it to be their, their best live album as far as it's raw and it's very yeah, yeah. authentic sounding, yeah. right? So. Now, yeah. still, it's still exit stage left for me. Just yeah. Because, just because the sound of it is so good. Yeah. It just sounds so 
Okay. Although, did you get the different stages? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the one from the Hampshire Bowden mm, in the yeah. day, that's probably my favourite, actually. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. That, that by far is one of the best, like, early, like, time rush material that I've heard in a long time, like, you know, 77. That's yeah, like, straight off the board. Yeah. Straight off the board. No, no, no fixing anything up, no, no, no tricks. As and, yeah. it was. But I don't think we're trying to big fans on fixing stuff anyway. There's mistakes on all, their, all, their, all of their uh, videos and DVDs. Yeah. There's, there's a fantastic place mistake on, um, uh, what's it, show of hands. Mm. Where he's playing kind of a, 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 I think, semitone sharp on one bass part. I can't remember which tune's in. <laughs> but I mean, and they didn't fix it. It's a nice a large show, man. Yeah. I like that. It, exactly. I mean, why why bother? I mean, the fans are just going to enjoy it for what it is anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Still going to get a bad review because of that. <laughs> Unless it's in every song. Exactly. Okay, so after that little bit of talking there, we uh, ended up talking a little bit more about a few other things. And then I decided to ask him a few more uh, concrete questions about himself and what was going on with him after the tour and with ARW in general. So let's put that part in here. Well, I wanted to just uh, ask you, when you're done this, um, do you, what's your plan after that as far as what you're going to be doing? Well, um, after this tour finishes, I go back to the UK and I've got two weeks at home and then I go off to Australia and New Zealand with a different group that I play for in the UK. Oh, great. So I'm there for three weeks and I come back in the beginning of December and then that's Christmas and I've got a few months off. Uh, and then, you know, I'm waiting to hear about what's happening next year, really. Yeah. Yeah. That should be really good. Is there any idea of anything going on with this after? There's, there's a lot of chat about it, a lot of talk, but yet no actual um, dates. But yeah. there's a lot of talk about what's going on. Because obviously next year is 50th anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's a big, it's a big thing. Oh, the big thing I was going to ask you about, too, is do you have any idea about when the album will be coming out? No, not yet. Again, it's, you know, these things are uh, a work in progress. Yeah. Because, uh, obviously, Rick's very busy. Rick's portraits, piano portraits mm -hmm. album, did incredibly well back in the UK. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's been touring, just playing, doing that. Trevor's also, you know, got projects coming up. So, but there is a lot of music recorded now, mm -hmm. and I've heard a lot of it. It's fantastic. So, and I'm, you know, still due to play on it pretty yeah. soon. And yeah. the guy said to me, look, you know, we just kind of get these done. And I said, yep, yeah, fine, let me know. So, but no, I don't know when. I don't know when. No. That's, that's great, though, because, I mean, Kevin's going to go see uh, Rick in uh, somewhere nearby where he lives in England for the piano portrait. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he, has, oh, yeah. He, has, oh, yeah. he has tickets for he's, he's over the moon excited about it. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rick, that album of Rick's, I mean, it's like, went to number one. Oh, really, eh? Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's sold, I mean, a ridiculous amount of copies within like the first week or two. And it's still selling now, so it's still doing really well. Unbelievable, because I mean, yeah. over here it did pretty good too. I mean, I got it when it came out right away, and mm. I know a lot of people within the group and all that have bought it and stuff, so I know it's just decent, but I didn't realize it was that well. In the I think it is, it, as far as I remember, it was, a, it was a number one. I think it went there for like a week. Wow. Or two weeks, but uh, it went right up there. Really. Fantastic. Well, I guess I won't take too much more of your time, so right, thank man. you for letting me uh, speak right. with you there. Chat, man. So after